So I was going to make a video that made fun of the latest Call of Duty World War II patch and would have gone something like this. They buffed only one of the four shotguns and it still gets hit markers at ranges that you can sneeze on enemies at. The LMGs are now at least somewhat usable compared to SMGs and fully auto rifles, except for the Tommy Gun and MP40, which inexplicably got buffs, while nerfs were handed out to the FG42 and Machine Pistol after they were exposed at MLG Dallas for being overpowered, along with making fun of how counting isn't their strong suit at Sledgehammer Games, but I'd rather rather talk about this drifter skill based matchmaking thousand dollar challenge. If all I had to do was go into 10 different lobbies and issue some commands at the DOS prompt and put numbers in a spreadsheet, I would have actually taken the time to do so. That is to say that the study was extremely flawed. A cursory glance at the data reveals that it looks like as though the win loss ratio is similar amongst all players in the lobby and that would immediately raise red flags. Most of these servers however were within an acceptable ping of the player's location except for one in China of which I'd love to know what the other players' pings were to that same server. Other than the obvious sample size issues was the fact that the main gripe of skill-based matchmaking is that there is a factor other than ping which takes priority in matching you with opponents into a lobby. The problem with the data shown is that it does not show what the pings and data was for the lobbies that were not chosen by the algorithm to place our player into. That is to say that there are a lot of assumptions made about both the lobby that was being chosen and those lobbies lobbies that were not chosen as a result. We don't know if there were other lobbies with lower pings than the one that our player was placed into that they could have been placed into, but for some reason the skill level didn't match and that's why they were placed into the less than optimal ping lobby and that is the root of what needs to be proven in order to say that skill based matchmaking is in fact in the game. We're not looking at game code like Michelle claimed to have done after hearing about the challenge, so unless we get this pertinent information, it's impossible to prove that lobbies are being matched for skill over ping because we don't don't know if there are other lobbies that were excluded because of higher ping and thus connection was king, or if there were other lower ping lobbies that were rejected due to not matching the skill criteria. In this study, it assumes that all servers that were rejected were because of the fact that it did not match the skill criteria, when it could have been the case that all of the other lobbies that did not get chosen happened to have higher ping than the one that was chosen for the player. Then there's the practical thought analysis behind the data. It's much easier to have a lower win loss than a higher one due to the nature of disconnecting or backing out of games means you get a loss, so you could more easily rank up losses than wins. In both of these samples, the win loss ratio of our players is around 40%, which is the middle of the road for the majority of Call of Duty players, so there's probably more players near this level given the mechanism for giving losses for backing out of matches. This means that even if there are in all cases matches where players with very similar win loss ratios are placed in the same lobby, it could be due to the player population numbers and not because of the algorithm forcing them together. When you have a giant pool of similar players, the likelihood that you're going to get matched with that giant pool of similar players is also very high. There also aren't studies done on the same account after a giant winning or losing streak, which means that it's impossible to see the tread lines move when this factor is scaled upwards or downwards. If there really was skill-based matchmaking, one would see that as the win-loss ratio of these players would would go down, then the relative win-loss ratio of their lobbies would also decrease and vice versa. I don't see this one-to-one -one relationship done anywhere in this analysis. The absence of this in the study is notable because of how it is inferred that skill-based matchmaking works. Now, don't start typing in the comments section now that I'm a cod apologist or a conjury cocksucker because believe me, Michelle looks feminine enough but I'd never fuck him. But I'm simply poking holes in the methods used to prove skill-based matchmaking. However, it doesn't really matter in the end, right? All that matters is your experience, and that's why we're even having this discussion in the first place. Some players feel like they're being matched with stronger players and that connections are worse off because of it. Never mind the fact that boots on the ground games have a much lower skill gap than the past three Call of Duty games of the advanced movement, so those players that are much better aren't radically better this time around, so it means that the data is more compressed than in years past, along with the worst launch for servers in Call of Duty history means that shitty connection that you're experiencing might not be 
due to lobby choices but the fact that all lobbies are fucked. The perception is greater than the reality with some people. I don't experience the skill based matchmaking in this game the same way that I did anecdotally with Advanced Warfare getting matched up with professional Call of Duty players in the United States when I was playing with mostly EU players with really good stats in their party that they were hosting. There were games when I shit on players and there are other games when I'm on the receiving end of it. However, one thing I have experienced which lines up with the study is the terrible teammates as you guys have seen with my latest Rage video. This isn't as big of a deal to me since the lobby has already been put together which is when the decisions are made based on ping. With so many other things to complain about in this game, harping on something that may or may not even be possible to prove is a waste of the time of both the community and the developers. I understand that even if the stats are 3 out of a thousand, when you're the three, it fucking sucks. But individual experiences are not indicative of programmatic algorithms. However, the experience matters much more than the overall composition because you're the one playing the game, not playing a summation of a 25,000 sample size worth of games. And if you're not enjoying playing the game, then just don't fucking do it. I rarely play the game on console anymore because it's just terrible compared to the PC version, which itself isn't even that great compared with other Call of Duty games. The skill-based matchmaking challenge was flawed, and even if the data does have a strong correlation for win-loss on matches, it doesn't mean that skill-based matchmaking is present in the game because we're missing crucial pieces of information like the pings and data of the other lobbies which were not selected for our player. And the number one rule of statistics, correlation does not equal causation. What do you guys think? I've been the Schwantz 27 making like a banana and splitting. Until next time.